Hey guys, it's Paul here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So every year, Apple is always talking about how great their cameras are and how they could eventually replace a real professional camera. And to be honest, they are not there yet, but they are this close, like this close. In my opinion, when it comes to photography, iPhones are actually very, very close to real professional camera. I mean, most people, including me, won't be able to tell the difference between a picture taken with an iPhone and a picture taken with a real professional camera. I mean, maybe someone that does photography for a living or someone who is a real professional like Peter McCannon and all those big guys on YouTube that knows about cameras and stuff, they might be able to tell the difference. But average users like most of you guys and I, uh, we won't be able to tell the difference between a picture taken with an iPhone and a picture taken with a real professional camera. That's just the truth. And that's actually a very good thing. Yeah, it's actually a very, very good thing. That means you don't have to get a professional camera to take great pictures and stuff like that. And iPhone cameras, are they've been getting better and better each and every year. I feel like when it comes to photography, you don't really need a professional camera like the Sony A7R 3 or the A7R 4 or any Sony camera or any Canon camera or any professional camera for that matter because I'm not attached to any brand. All cameras are amazing. I mean, recently Sony, Canon have been releasing amazing cameras. But if you're like an average person that just wants to take amazing pictures and at the same time, that same device will be able to do other different things, well, the iPhone is actually a very great option. Unless you're taking pictures that has to do with wildlife and stuff like that. You know those kind of pictures that you have to zoom in into your subject. I mean, maybe your subject is like three or four miles away or probably 10 miles away. I mean, obviously the two times zoom on the iPhone 12 or the iPhone 11 won't be able to go 10 miles deep unless you're using um, the Note 20 Ultra. No, not the Note 20 Ultra. The S20 Ultra that has 100 times zoom, which the footage actually looks, well, that's a different story. When it comes to videography, that's actually a very different story because I can be able to tell the difference between a footage taken with an iPhone and a video taken with a real professional camera. Why? Well, I've been using an iPhone for a very long time and I do take videos of myself working out or something like that. So I know the color science of the iPhone. I know how good the dynamic range is. And I know, I just know that, okay, this video was taken on an iPhone compared to a real professional camera. One way I'm able to tell the difference between a video taken with an iPhone and a video taken with a real professional camera, well, is this depth of field. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying that iPhones do not have um, depth of field, but the sensor, the sensor size on an iPhone, I mean, they are not fully capable of giving you that depth of field. When it comes to like this current setup that I'm in right now, if you take a video of me right now with an iPhone, you're not gonna get that depth of field. Like you see my foreground, um, this is me and my background. Uh, if you take it, this current setup with an iPhone, everything is gonna be in focus. And that's one way I'm able to tell that, okay, this person took this video with an iPhone. I could show you guys what I'm talking about right now. Just give me a second. So this is the iPhone 12. I'm about to attach it to this tripod right now and like put it right, right beside my Sony a7 III. And I'm gonna show you guys what I'm talking about. I mean, I'm not saying that this is like a general way of knowing if your footage was taken with an iPhone, but this is just one of the ways that I know, okay, this video was taken on an iPhone. That's just my personal way of telling if a video was taken with an iPhone. I mean, I don't know all the time, but most of the time, I'm always right that, okay, this video was taken with an iPhone compared to a video taken with a real professional camera. I talk too much, right? So I already set up my iPhone and my Sony A7 III. I want you guys to take a guess of which one is an iPhone and which one is a Sony A7 III. I'm gonna give you guys five seconds. Okay, time's up. Well, this is the Sony A7 III and this is the iPhone 12. As you can see on my Sony A7 III, I don't know, maybe it has something to do with the fact that it has a bigger sensor or the lens or something like that. Guys, I'm not a professional. I'm not gonna pretend as if I'm a professional or Peter McCannon or those big guys on YouTube. I actually just started my YouTube channel two months ago, but I feel like most people should be able to tell the difference between a professional camera, which is this one right here, and the footage taken with an iPhone. I mean, some people might be able to take this footage on an iPhone and make it better, but um, I don't think there is anything much you can do right now. So as you can see, everything in my background is in focus. While everything in my background on my Sony a7 III is blurry probably because of i'm using a sony 24 millimeter 1.4 so it has a wide aperture so when it comes to the cameras on the iphone 12 what is new well you can't be able to tell the difference between the camera setup of the iphone 11 and the iphone 12 well let's take a look at the back yeah this is it this is what the back looks like this is exactly what the iPhone 11, the camera setup of the iPhone 11 looks like, exactly. I mean, the only difference is that on the iPhone 12, you get a slightly bigger sensor. And I don't think 
anyone will be able to tell the difference because it's just millimeter difference between the iPhone 11 to the iPhone 12 and I don't think anyone has that much accurate eyes unless you have like some lizard eyes or something like that most people are not going to be able to tell the only way you can tell an iphone 11 from the iphone 12 is if you look at the boxy design yeah the iphone 12 all four variants of the iphone 12 has this boxy design and by the way if you're enjoying what you're watching right now i want you guys to consider subscribing to my youtube channel because on this channel i do tech unboxing tech reviews and tech comparison i'm actually going to be dropping my review video of the iphone 12 and i have a lot of things to talk about so you might want to consider subscribing to my youtube channel Anyways, I decided to take my iPhone 12 to the city and just take some sample videos. I mean, the footage that I took from the iPhone 12 are not significantly better than my iPhone 11 Pro Max. Where's my iPhone 11 Pro Max? Yeah. I've been using the iPhone 11 Pro Max for, well, ever since Apple released the iPhone 11 Pro Max actually. So, which is over a year. And I'm not going to say that the footage taken with an iPhone 12, this is just the iPhone 12, not the iPhone 12 Pro. I'm not going to say that the footage taken with the iPhone 12 is better than my iPhone 11 Pro Max, probably because this is a Pro and this is the non-Pro iPhone 12. I haven't seen the iPhone 12 Pro yet, but I'm about to get the iPhone 12 Pro Max, so it doesn't make sense for me to buy the iPhone 12 Pro. But when the iPhone 12 Pro Max comes out, I'm going to be doing a lot of comparison with the iPhone 11 Pro Max with the iPhone 12. So that's one reason to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Like the button is right, just right there. Just Press that button right there if you want to see more of this ugly face <laughs> and if you want to see more of my content anyways. Anyways, I'm going to show you guys a footage that I took with my iPhone 12. Um, the footage you're about to see now is not the best footage that anyone can take. That's just the footage that I'm, I'm capable of taking because at the end of the day, it's not really your tool that predicts the kind of video you can take because, I mean, there are professionals out there that can use an outdated camera to take amazing footage like really really amazing footage but i feel like what i'm about to show you right now is what most people can take with the iphone most average people like i said i'm not a professional you could go out there and take way better footage than what i'm about to show you right now or probably worse <laughs> but what i'm about to show you right now was taking with the iphone 12 no extra equipment no gimbal just my iphone 12 my tripod and my bicycle that's all i used that's literally all i used my bicycle i mean there was tiny tiny portals on the road but the video stabilization on the iphone 12 is actually amazing like really really amazing so let me just show you guys what i'm talking about So I hope you guys check the video quality, the dynamic range, and the color science. And speaking of color science, I slightly graded the footage that you just saw right now. I mean, it's not because the, the color science out of the camera of the iPhone 12 is terrible, but the footage on the iPhone 12, I mean, by the way, the footage on the iPhone 12, I mean, I'm actually very, very surprised on how well, on, let me say, on how far you can actually push those colors. On my Sony a 73 if I try to do the same, all the colors are going to be like, wow. 
<laughs> they're gonna look terrible but when it comes to color grading nobody nobody has like perfect color that's just what i like to see i mean some of you guys might not like the color grading that i use on the footage i mean some of you guys might like it and some of you guys might not even notice that's the thing about color grading it, it comes down to personal preference you could color grade your footage differently i'm gonna color grade mine differently so there's no perfect color grading so what you just saw right now is just my own personal taste that's just it. So when it comes to video quality, I'm gonna say the video quality on the iPhone 12, well, it's slightly, what I say, slightly, slightly <laughs> better than the iPhone 11 series. Yeah, it's just slightly better than the iPhone 11 series. All four variants of the iPhone 12 can shoot four, no, not all four variants. I mean, the iPhone 12 Pro and the iPhone 12 Pro Max can shoot 10-bit Adobe Color at 4K 60 frames a second, while the iPhone 12 mini and the regular iPhone 12, which is one I have over here, can shoot at um, 4K 10-bit Adobe Color 30 frames per second. I mean, that's not actually bad because most videos that you watch on Netflix or, or YouTube or something like that, I shot at 24 frames per second. That's almost like the natural thing that the eyes can see. Anything more than 24 frames per second, like 60 frames, I mean, 60 frames per second is not bad, but you don't get this motion blur. If it was like 120 hertz, everything is gonna be very, very, very sharp, which is not gonna look natural. So 4K, 30 frames per second, 10 bit Adobe color on the iPhone 12 mini and the iPhone 12, ah man, I get confused so many times. On the iPhone 12 mini and the iPhone 12 Pro, oh, oh. On the iPhone 12 mini and the regular iPhone 12 is not actually bad. So for those of you guys that, that are trying to consider, okay, uh, let me get the iPhone 12 Pro and the Pro Max because they have 60 frames per second Adobe 10 big color. I mean, there are benefits to having 4K 60 frames per second, like slowing down your footage or something like that. I mean, most people just take videos with their iPhone and just keep it to themselves or share with their friends or something like that. I mean, not everybody takes a video with their iPhone and put it on the TV or something like that. I mean, you could do something like that, but and even if you do, even if you do, you still need a software to slow down the footage from 60 frames a second to 30 or 24 frames a second. My point is that 30 frames a second, 4K Adobe 10 bit color is enough for most activities that you do. Unless you, like I said, you're trying to slow the footage down. Well, I already talked about the video quality. Now let's talk about the dynamic range. The dynamic range of the iPhone 12 is actually very good. And what do I mean by dynamic range? The ability of the camera to properly expose the subject and the brightest part of the image properly instead of overexposing the brightest part of the footage is called, well, a good dynamic range. Like example, um, this is you. Let's say this is you and this is the sky. Obviously the sky is blue and there's cloud there and something like that. A camera with a good dynamic range will expose you properly then we'll explode the color of the sky, like blue, and you'll be able to see the clouds and everything. On a, on a camera that has a bad dynamic range, it's just gonna overblown the sky, like the, as the sky is gonna be like plain white, instead of the blue and the cloud and something like that. And sometimes even overexpose the subject itself. So that's my understanding of dynamic range. Like I said, I'm not a professional, so please forgive me. Well, it also depends on the weather. Not all the time that the sky is blue and white, sometimes the sky is just plain white or something like that. Like the day I shot this video, there wasn't like blue and cloud or something like that. The sky was just plain, let me say gray, or let's say gray or grayish white. So the sky that you see right there is just the, that's just how the sky looks like. So I'm not gonna say the sky was overexposed or underexposed. That's just how the sky looks like. So the dynamic of the iPhone 12 is great. Anyways, now let's take a look at the pictures taken with the iPhone 12 during the daytime. I'm gonna show you guys right now, like, right now. So as you guys have seen, there's a lot of details in the picture. Um, the one on the left was um, the one that I, I didn't grade and the one on the right, I think I actually put it right there, ungraded and graded. So the one on the left, wait, is it left or right? 
yeah you know what i'm talking about you know you, you saw ungraded and graded on the footage so the one on the left is actually the one straight out of the camera which means ungraded and the one on the right was graded a little bit the dynamic range is amazing the color science is amazing the quality of the picture is amazing when it comes to portraits well i'm actually very very impressed with the portraits taken with the iphone 12. i mean i'm not saying in this in the fact that it's way better than my iphone 11 pro max like if you guys like zoom in into all those pictures i don't know if you guys can zoom in into all those pictures if you zoom in, if you zoom into one of the portraits i took let's say one of the portraits i took with mr wobbly head you can see that everything except for mr wobbly head was out of focus and if you zoom in properly and check below the arms of mr wobbly head you can see that in between those arms everything is out of focus and everything is sharp i mean i was actually surprised when i zoomed into it because i was expecting that part to be like in focus because it was actually very small but i'm actually very impressed like really really impressed the portrait mode on the iphone 12 is amazing which makes me wonder what the lidar sensor on the iphone 12 pro and the pro max can be able to do because i'm i can't really wait to see what the lidar sensor can do let's move on to nighttime pictures I mean, New York is a city that never sleeps because there's lights everywhere. There's, it's very hard to find a very, very dark part in New York, especially in the city. It's very hard to find a very, very dark part, but I managed to get some. As you guys can see, the pictures taken with the iPhone 12 during the nighttime is actually amazing, like really, really amazing. I mean, it's not as perfect as the pictures taken during the daytime, but it's actually very close, except um, some of the pictures that has noise on the sides. I mean, some of them has noise on the side but uh, i mean you really have to look very very close to notice those noise like if you just take those pictures and just take a look at it without looking deep into the picture you'll notice all those noise like if you zoom into one of those pictures you'll be able to see some some noise action going on right there but uh, i don't really mind a little noise um, in fact sometimes noise actually adds to like the beauty of a picture if that makes any sense guys forgive me i wasn't able to take a lot of nighttime sample videos because it was actually very very cold like really really cold <laughs> and i'm not gonna die because i want to make a video or something like that i mean i'm gonna go through a lot of stress just to make quality content for you guys but dying is a different story because it was very very cold it's very very cold in new york in fact i'm indoor right now and i still have to put on this stuff anyways i talked too much let me just show you the footage As you guys can see right there, the nighttime videos taken with the iPhone 12 is not actually that bad. Like, it's not really that bad. And for some reason, I was still able to color grade nighttime video footage on the iPhone 12, which is actually amazing because the footage you saw right now isn't straight out of the camera. This is the footage straight out of the camera. As you can see now, there isn't much difference because I didn't really push the color that hard because nighttime videos doesn't really contain a lot of details, just a lot of shadows and the lights and stuff like that. But the nighttime video on the iPhone 12, I mean, if you have a lot of equipment like a gimbal and everything perfect, the lighting is perfect, the iPhone 12 is actually a very capable camera for nighttime videos, like really, really capable camera. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. My point is that the iPhone 12, is actually a very amazing tool for photography and videography but can the iphone 12 actually replace a real professional camera ah uh, man i don't think so but it's actually very very close anyways if you guys enjoyed this video i want you guys to consider subscribing to my youtube channel or smash that button if that's what you're into and turn on that notification bell and i'll see you guys in my next video come back peace